The Defense Acquisition Council, chaired by Defense Minister Rajnath Singh, approved military procurements worth about Rs 67,000 crore to boost the capabilities of the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The Army will get thermal imager-based driver night sights for BMPs, enhancing night mobility, and new air defense fire control radars, with 70% indigenous content. The Navy will procure compact autonomous surface craft for anti-submarine warfare, BrahMos launch systems, and upgraded Barak-1 missiles. The Air Force will receive mountain radars, upgraded spider air defense systems, and sustainment support for C-17, C-130J, and S-400 systems. All three services will induct mail drones for long-endurance surveillance and strike missions. These approvals, coupled with earlier BL radar contracts, mark a significant step in India's defense modernization and indigenization drive. During Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s state visit to India, both nations held strategic talks to boost defense cooperation, focusing on developing submarine infrastructure in the Philippines. The initiative aims to strengthen maritime security, improve regional domain awareness, and enhance interoperability between the two navies amid rising Indo-Pacific tensions. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Marcos Jr. also formalized several defense and trade agreements, including a landmark BrahMos missile deal, symbolizing advanced technology transfer. These discussions align with India's Act East policy and the shared vision of a free, open, and secure Indo-Pacific. By supporting the Philippines' submarine capabilities, India positions itself as a key ASEAN security partner, while both nations work to safeguard vital sea lanes and counter growing regional maritime challenges. LAT Aerospace, founded by Zomato co founder Deepinder Goyal, has launched efforts in Bengaluru to develop an indigenous jet engine for short takeoff and landing aircraft, UAVs and future aviation platforms. The company aims to create a 10 to 15 kN thrust class engine, suitable for 12 to 24 seater aircraft, operating from short or improvised runways. Defense experts note the challenges citing DRDO's decade-long small turbofan engine project and how still maturing HDFE 25 program. LAT plans to recruit top propulsion and aerospace talent to make the goal achievable. If successful, the engine could serve both civilian and military needs, reducing India's dependence on foreign propulsion systems. The initiative aligns with the Atmanur Barbarat vision and could provide a modular power solution for multiple aerial platforms. India's DRDO, through its Hyderabad-based chess lab, is developing advanced particle beam weapons, potentially placing India among the US, Russia, and China in this elite technology domain. Building on its April 2025 success with the MK2A, 30 kW laser-directed energy weapon, chess is leveraging expertise in high-energy physics and the Kali Particle Accelerator program to create near-light-speed weapons capable of neutralizing drones, missiles and satellites. Particle beams can disable electronics via electromagnetic pulses, penetrate hardened targets, and provide cost-effective ammunition-free defense. The program aligns with the Atmanur Barbarat vision and could support platforms like the AMCA stealth fighter or space-based defense systems. If successful, it will mark a strategic leap in India's directed energy weapons capability enhancing both national security and future warfare preparedness. Tata Advanced Systems Limited (TSL) has showcased the Land Rover Defender to the Indian Army, highlighting its ruggedness and off-road performance for potential military use. Owned by Tata Motors through Jaguar Land Rover, the Defender has a proven global military record with the Royal Thai Army using it for artillery towing, and the British Army employing specialized variants for reconnaissance and troop transport. During a recent visit by Lieutenant Gen Dhiraj Seth, GOCNC Southern Command, to TASL's Pune facility, 
the defender was presented to senior officials. While procurement plans remain unconfirmed, TSL aims to position the vehicle as a versatile platform for challenging terrains. Customized military variants could be developed, leveraging Tata's manufacturing expertise to strengthen India's operational mobility in demanding environments. The Defense Acquisition Council, chaired by Defense Minister Rajnath Singh, has approved the acceptance of necessity for procuring 87 indigenous medium-altitude long-endurance drones for the Army, Navy, and Air Force. These UAVs will provide long-range surveillance, persistent intelligence gathering and precision strike capabilities, operating for over 24 hours at altitudes up to 30,000 feet. The move supports the Atmanirbhar Bharat Initiative, aiming to reduce dependence on foreign imports, like the Heron and MQ-9B Predator. Indian contenders including Veda Aeronautics, Tata Advanced Systems, Kalyani Group, Adani Defense and DRDO's AD, have showcased advanced designs with satellite communication, electro-optical and infrared sensors, synthetic aperture radar, and precision-guided munition compatibility. The procurement will strengthen border security, naval reconnaissance, and counter-terror operations while boosting India's indigenous defense manufacturing ecosystem. In a heartbreaking news, a mudslide and cloudburst struck Uttarakhand's Atarkishi district, near Durali village on Tuesday, killing at least four people and leaving several missing. The disaster occurred around 1.45 p.m., just four kilometers from the Indian Army's Harshal camp. Within 10 minutes, the Army mobilized 150 personnel with doctors, medical supplies and rescue equipment. So far, 20 people have been rescued, and injured victims are receiving treatment. Shortly after, another mudslide and cloudburst hit the Harshal Army camp, but rescue efforts continued. Prime Minister Modi expressed condolences, spoke with Chief Minister Pushkar Dami, and assured full assistance. Videos from the scene showed houses being swept away by floodwaters as relief and rescue teams, under state supervision, worked tirelessly to aid affected residents. In 2025, Pratt & Whitney Canada announced plans to localize production of its PW-127G turboprop engines in India to power the Airbus C-295M aircraft for the Indian Air Force, Navy, and Coast Guard. This move complements Tata Advanced Systems Limited's final assembly line in Vadodara, operational since October 2024, which is producing 40 of the IF's contracted 56 C-295Ms. The PW-127G localization plan involves assembling engines from kits and manufacturing select components domestically, with partners like IndoMIM and KUN Aerospace, aiming to reduce imports and expand India's aerospace supply chain. The C295M program, worth Rs 21,935 crore, replaces the Avro 748 fleeks and supports multiple roles, including maritime patrol variants approved in 2024 for the Navy and Coast Guard. Sources indicate, discussions for nearly 100 more C-295MS are underway, potentially covering transport and specialized roles. The initiative is expected to create thousands of jobs, boost indigenous content, and open export prospects for both the aircraft and engines. India's gas turbine research establishment selected Francis Safran to co-develop a 110 to 120 kN thrust engine for the AMCA MK2, favoring it over Rolls-Royce due to a shorter 10-year development timeline. Instead of using the Rafale's older M88 core, the engine will be based on the advanced next-generation fighter demonstrator core, unveiled at the Paris Air Show 2025. This decision aligns with GTRE's demand for a scalable, future-ready core capable of powering sixth-generation platforms. The AMCA MK1 will use GE F414 engines, but the MK2, planned for production in 2035 and induction from 2037, 
requires greater thrust, supercruise, thrust vectoring, and stealth optimization. The NGF core offers modern technologies like adaptive cycle elements, ceramic matrix composites, and enhanced digital controls, ensuring both fifth generation plus performance and future upgrade potential. Safran's proposal also includes full intellectual property rights transfer, supporting India's long-term self-reliance and positioning AMCA as a bridge to sixth generation fighter capabilities. Rolls-Royce reaffirmed its strong interest in co-developing the 110 to 130 kilonewton engine for India's AMCA MK2, even as France's Safran emerged as the leading contender. India aims to select a partner by late 2025 for the engine, which will replace the General Electric F414 powering the AMCA MK1. Safran has gained traction due to its Kaveri Revival collaboration, offer of core hot section technology transfer, and plans for full-scale manufacturing in India. Its proven M88 engine heritage and comprehensive TOT proposal align closely with India's self-reliance goals. Rolls-Royce, however, is pushing a new engine design, tailored for AMCA, developed jointly with the Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE. Its proposal includes full transfer of technology, Indian ownership of intellectual property, make in India manufacturing, and a scalable architecture, capable of up to 200 kN thrust, for future sixth-generation and naval fighters. The decision will shape India's long-term aero engine capability and its path toward strategic autonomy in combat aviation. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.